At this point, may we call on Mary Ann Fraga, Bachelor in Secondary Education, Major in Biological Science, Summa Cum Laude, for her valedictory address. Our beloved President of the University of Makati, President Tomas B. Lopez Jr., Executive Vice President, Dr. Raimundo P. Arcega, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Dalisai G. Bronner, Vice President for Administration, Mrs. Aurora F. Serrano, University Secretary, Dr. Elixir C. Ramos, Guest Speaker, Dr. Quina N. Lee Chua, Dean of the College of Education, Dr. Milagros Lourdes M. Torres, Head of Undergraduate Program, Dr. Evangeline M. Alayon, College Deans and Executive Directors, Professors, Registrar, Staff, and Administrators of our prestigious University, Honorable Guests, Parents and Guardians, and my fellow graduates, good afternoon. Today marks a major achievement in our lives our graduation, a step towards another dream. This has been made because of the generous support of our families, our mentors, not to mention our own desire to achieve our goals. Allow me please to offer my deepest and sincerest thanksgiving to my parents, Ma, Pa, thank you for the beautiful genes you have passed on me. As my first teachers, you taught me my good manners. Thank you so much for your never-ending and unconditional love. Thank you also to my siblings, most especially to my Ate Angela, who have always supported me. Of course, a special, a special thanks for my Pag-ibig for always being by my side, through thick and thin. <laughs> to my fellow graduates, from Wani Eduk to 4C Bayasai, thank you for the laughter, cheat chat walkathons, playtime, chow time, and most of all, for your sincere friendship. We are, and forever will be, family. <laughs> to my fellow biological science majors, thank you. How can we ever forget our creative mentors? Mamaldea, are you here? Can you hear me? Hi. You taught us to appreciate plants and its mechanism to manipulate microscope, and to initiate micro techniques. These enhance our patience. You know that. <laughs> you never get tired of being excited to give quizzes, even when we were late, during a typhoon, <laughs> actually when we were noisy. Get one fourth, you'd say. <laughs> and we would reply, wow, mom, just a moment, please. We were really panicking because she's already number one, number two. <laughs> ma'am. If we were a plant, you were our sunshine that gives us energy. Mom Datu, you taught us to appreciate cells, genes, human anatomy, and physiology, as well as the dissection of frogs. But those are just the basics. Bottom line is that you always reminded us to observe right attitude in every occasion. You disciplined us, actually. You also inculcated in us the drive to find happiness within ourselves. You taught us that we cannot and should not find it in others, that we should define who we are in our own way. Ma'am, you are the heart of our class, the heart that always keeps us pumping. <laughs> Ma'am Rafalio, you're something else. <laughs> Chemistry is your game. We'll learn to call on God every second before, during, and after our exams. We would ask, Lord, more, more knowledge, please. <laughs> and we were planking, rolling over, and even tumbling around just to answer one question. Ma'am, you are our carbon that always keep us bonded together. <laughs> Sir Vargas, you have this tagline, dream big. Dream high, dream with me. <laughs> Sometimes we dream too much and daydream true throughout our night class. 
You, sir, served as our father. Our father Abraham, as we call you. Yet, our professor's best trademark, a mind-boggling exam. We will miss this and more. My fellow graduates, for the longest period we've spent here in UMAC, the university has molded us to be better citizens through mind principles. Here, we develop a strong foundation of what it meant to be a good Filipino, open-minded, with the ability to understand different views and opinions, being adaptive to diverse cultures and beliefs. This will eventually help us to overcome obstacles so we can live our dreams, pursue excellence, and make a difference. As teachers, in a few weeks or so, we now have our responsibility to our society. Let us use the knowledge and skills we gained to educate, nurture, and inspire others. Let us help and support our students become visionaries in their own way. Let us give them quality education. And above all, let us hone their individuality, fortifying individuals with good morals, a love for our fellow men, our country, and for God. This will allow future generations to gain a strong foundation of moral, intellectual, and spiritual values. We can only bestow true learning when we do it passionately and wholeheartedly, just like how our teachers and professors did for us. The calling to teach may lead to joy, or it may lead to disillusionment. Why is that so? It is because we may have the credentials to make us qualified to teach, but it doesn't mean that we will be a successful teacher. It is a reality to say that in two to three months' time, few, if not most of us, will end up in an teaching world. Even some of us will work as call center agents. Those who have passion for teaching will continue the profession, even though the benefits are few, underpaid, and unrecognized. Let us always remind ourselves that education degree is simply not a mere piece of paper or diploma to make it official so we could get paid for it. If we have to teach, uh, if we are to have a teaching career, it may be at private schools at first. A lot of us dream of becoming the part of a public school system. Yet, we do have several processes to go through. Thus, whenever our path takes us, let us give it our big shots. Every sort of students, either big and small schools, private or public schools, deserves the best kind of education. That is, the kind of education our mentors of UMAC gave us. And the ones we view as tools that would make a difference in the lives of the people in and out of our community. Today, we begin to face the real world of teaching our, outside our university. What we have acquired from our beloved alma mater will catapult us upward. However, we will be faced with disappointments and failures throughout our lives. We will often find ourselves falling short of our goals and expectations. But let us not be disheartened. Instead, learn from them and use them as tools for growth in pursuit of excellence. Let us go back to school, not just to teach, but also to study and learn again. It is not enough that we equip ourselves with more knowledge, techniques, and strategies in teaching. We also need to look forward at our professional and personal growth. As we all know, learning is a never-ending process. We should not forget to look back where we came from or reminisce the past that molded us for who we are today. Let us thank everyone who helped us, be it in small or big ways. I have said this before, and I will say this again. I have high hopes for us. I hope we will be instruments of change. I hope we will guide our students to the best of our abilities, helping them reach their aspirations and dreams. Remember that today is the celebration of the fruits of our labor. Armed with this in the love of our families, I hope all of us will triumph in our chosen paths and profession. As I bid you farewell and end this speech, I'd like to share a quote by John Dewey. Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. To top it all, let us always cling to heavenly wisdom, 
We plan ahead and work out that plan in consonance with divine principles. Proverbs 21.5 reminds us that the plans of the diligent lead to success as surely as haste lead to poverty. And in times when we were faced with trials, let us be strengthened with what the prophet Isaiah tells us about our loving God. Oh, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. My fellow graduates, congratulations. And to everyone in this hall, a pleasant afternoon. Thank you for making this special day possible for us.